Jet Moto was one of my favorite series of games back in the late 90s. Well, that is before 989 Studios took over and God, they ruined all my favorite games back then. Anyway, it all started in October of 1996 with Jet Moto for the PlayStation. Jet Moto was developed by Singletrack, who had released Twisted Metal a year earlier. When this game came out, I was really impressed, and I think most of the gaming world was. We were still young to the whole 32-bit 3D world of gaming and very easily pleased back in 96. So when a 3D, futuristic, hoverbike racing game comes along, people stop and pay attention. The first thing to note, which you'll notice right off the bat from the main menu, is the fantastic surf guitar style of music in the game. It's very Pulp Fiction feeling, and though at first it might seem odd for a hover bike game, it fits well and helps add to the excitement during a race. You'll start out by choosing your rider, which each represents certain sponsors. Nah, it's good to know Butterfinger's still around in the future. Mm. Each rider has different handling, and you really will notice how much they differ once you get used to a specific rider. The tracks feature a few different themes like swamps, post-disaster areas, and the skies above a futuristic city. These tracks get damn tough. I've always had a bit of an issue with the difficulty of the Jet Moto series. Gameplay is pretty simple. You have buttons for gas, brake, the shoulder buttons that help you lean in and out of curves, and a turbo button. You'll get four turbos per lap. Oh, and there's also a grapple button. The game features these magnetic poles that are placed throughout the courses usually near really sharp turns and by pressing the grapple button you can use these poles to help guide you around corners without losing speed. These can be kinda tricky to get used to though. Even with the physics being a bit floaty feeling the bikes still feel very heavy and it can be a bit hard to control them on smaller platforms especially when having to jump from platform to platform. One thing that sucks at times is how easy it is to fall off of your jet moto, or how certain jumps lead you right into walls or objects that clothesline you right off your bike. Depending on the level or difficulty you have the game set to, there really isn't much room for error in the later levels. Some of the levels can feel a bit cluttered at times too, but overall they're all pretty entertaining. Especially the suicide courses, where there's a single back and forth track with turnaround points at each end. This causes some serious head-on collisions. I really like the overall presentation of the game. The graphics don't always hold up so well depending on the level, but some levels look pretty good. I like the reflection effects used in the swamp levels, and I've always liked the way they made the menus look. There are some issues with clipping here and there, but it's a fairly early PS1 release, so I don't expect too much. I mentioned the music, which I think is great all around, and the sound effects aren't too bad either. I mean, there's nothing special here, but far from hard to listen to. There aren't very many gameplay modes. You can choose to go race through a season, have a single race, or practice. Overall, it's a pretty solid racer, and back in 96, it was definitely one of my favorites. Jet Moto 2 was released a year later. More levels, more action, more difficulty, less riders. Yeah, they actually reduced the number of riders this time. Now you only have 10 riders to choose from, and only 10 races at a time, opposed to the original having 20 riders per race. The bio screens also carry over from the first, though I don't really care to get to know these people. I mean, game like Twisted Metal, I guess it's kind of cool to read about Sweet Tooth and what he's about, but. Who are these people? With Jet Moto 2 also being developed by single track, not a whole lot has changed. The menus all look pretty similar in design, and just like the first, this one features a great soundtrack. As far as levels go, this one is probably my favorite installment, as it has a lot of really cool, fun, and unique tracks, along with the original tracks from the first game. The new tracks are a lot more difficult, though, as if the first wasn't hard enough for me. The controls remain pretty much the same, though the boost system has changed a little bit. Instead of having a certain number of pre-timed boosts, this time you have a boost meter, so if you want to just get a quick jump on the action, you can tap triangle, or if you want to just hold it down, you can see how fast you can go. The game runs a little bit smoother, but other than that, looks and feels pretty much the same. 
It still has some clipping issues here and there, though it seems like textures have been smoothed out a little bit. The game modes are all the same as well, which kind of sucks. It would have been nice to see an addition in the sequel. They did, however, add a new sponsor in the form of Chef Boyardee. I heard that they wanted their name on one of the Jet Motos, but one of the main developers was so against it that he managed to get them to be happy with their logo placed on billboards around the track instead. Jet Moto 2 improved on the first without having to do too much. I mean, all we really wanted were some new levels, and that's what we got. Then the ultimate crap fest happened. Single Track got bought out by GT Interactive. Sony then took their in-house team and renamed them 989 Studios. And since Sony owned the rights to Jet Moto, they put 989 Studios in charge of the third installment. Now, rumor has it that they went to the original developers from the first two titles, but they had no interest in returning to work on a third Jet Moto. So they got Pacific Coast Power and Light to take over. What a name. <laughs> According to 989 Studios, the reasoning behind choosing them was that they were nearby and cheap. So in August of 1999, Jet Moto 3 hit store shelves. Gone is the cool music and it's replaced with techno style dance stuff. I don't like it at all. And the menus don't look the same and the cool art within them is also long gone. Now the riders appear in a kind of CGI style of graphics, it looks cheesy. Same with the biopics, they look really bad and some of the riders look oddly creepy. I mean, come on here, this, this lady's playing volleyball, she should be a little happier, she just looks so depressed. The graphics were smoothed out greatly, which is a nice improvement, and the game also features some nice new weather elements, but other than that, I don't have many nice things to say about this game. The game engine was completely redesigned, and though they sped up the racing, it feels a bit too hectic. For one, the camera struggles to keep up with what's going on, and this leads to a lot of blind racing. The jet motos feel a lot lighter and turn a lot quicker than before, though they still slide around quite a bit, which causes unresponsive turning. But that was also present in the first two games. The track layouts are decent, but most of them feel really cluttered. It's like I'm always crashing into something I can't avoid. And I fall off the edges even more in this game, which gets frustrating. Oh, and every time you fall off or crash, they place you back before the spot that you did. Now, that's just lame. One positive though, it's definitely harder to fall off of your bike, and even after I've fallen off and crashed a few dozen times, I still manage to finish the race with a decent ranking. It feels like they designed the game to kind of give you some leeway knowing how hard they made the tracks. Now we finally see a new game mode. Stunt mode is actually all right. You get to race around a track with different stunt obstacles as you rack up points for doing tricks. I've had a bit of fun playing this mode, and actually it's one of the few things that keep me turning this game on every so often. Jet Moto 3 received some decent reviews. Obviously, I didn't like it too much. Maybe if it didn't have the Jet Moto name, I would have appreciated it more, but because it did, I expected more out of it. That being said, it's not a horrible game and it completes the collection, so if you're getting the first two, you might as well throw this one in too.